are live. Live. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we are back now. Um, welcome back, OG. We are back um, with Peter. Um, Peter is going to um, introduce Symbiosphera. And um, yeah, um, I feel how um, there is so much uh, meaningful project around the globe and um, giving space to what is already there and connecting um, what is already there. I feel it's something very precious and I'm very happy to have Peter um, introducing us the project in the platform. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'll just jump in there. But, uh, first, thank you very much for uh, yeah giving the opportunity. It's a really nice platform to talk to the CCC. Uh, yeah, we, I was there, I think it was three years ago in in Hamburg. Mm. I had a really like I was there as a as a DJ and yeah, I was really just blown away by the the whole the whole structure of the of the of the of the gathering. Mm. And, I, and had one of my best DJ experiences there. It was on because it was like a it was a circular sound system. There was like there was no uh, like all function one, and there was no um like behind the DJ booth was just just as nice as be, as in front, and it was just this really nice feeling of being in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a really yeah, beautiful experience and yeah, good sound. It was you could tell people were taking care. Of. But um, yeah, and here we are in the virtual sphere. And then the, I think you were in CCC as well. This is Biat, who we also do Symbios Ferro with. And you were in CCC last year as well. Last right? year, yes. It was really nice in Leipzig. Um, we did also a little mini performance there with um, a headphone experience. And I enjoyed a lot the uh, CCC. And I'm happy that it can take part this year in another way, but really interesting way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Symbiosphera. Um, maybe I give a little introduction about how it came about, like the genesis of yeah, why why the how the idea came and it was from many different things kind of over over the years, but one like one moment in my life that I realized that uh, yeah, there was one moment that I really felt a need for this platform was when um it was like two years ago, just after my, or two and a half years ago, just after my daughter was born. And usually I go to, to Brazil. We have like, we have a project in Brazil. Um, you can see here on the map, it's this project here, Bulboza Sapucaia. And we have this project where we do um, reforestation and music. And after my daughter was born, like usually we go there every year, spend half the year there and working on the land and working on the on music there. But after, yeah, after my daughter was born, it just felt really far to go across the Atlantic with a three-year-old daughter. And so it was the first time I actually looked at Europe and thought, okay, where, where is it good to go in Europe when you want to just be in nature and you want to, want to also work with music and somehow not avoid the, like, the, or kind of be, get out a little bit of the city and get, get into nature. So I was looking at all these different platforms that existed, like um, these, um, permaculture um, or eco village dot it's like eco village dot com I think or dot org it's like a nice platform like this where you can see all the different hotspots of different places and there's like eurogen dot org as well which is another um, platform for eco villages and different um, yeah different projects but somehow like oh yeah so it's going it's just sprawling Europe and just trying to find something that was like right that I could like uh, connect with and kind of Kind of um, know that would be like an, a good place to bring my family and to kind of spend a few months and help out with the with the land and also maybe like connect with some musicians there and make music and I just found it just by going on these platforms that it was just very very difficult to get any kind of feeling about how it would be there because like, all these places are already focused on the on the permaculture and and they're very focused on the the results of the farming which is great but on the cultural level there was very little I could get as a kind of feedback about how like if we go there okay maybe just going there you can try out but yeah it was just like um yeah it wasn't very intuitive way to, like and i've tried many different places talked to different people and of course connections are always the best way like if you know someone who knows someone it's always the best way for connections 
but virtually like traveling and connecting with Europe, I just found it so difficult as a musician, but just as yeah, like culturally as well. And there's so many nice things happening in, in these projects and many of these places have musicians and anytime I do go to, to eco villages or, or, or like any kind of projects, there's always a studio. Like here, like we're here, we're in, um, in Dijon, just outside Dijon at the Anvesend. And it's like they do, they do permaculture and they do music as well. And they have a music studio and um, a little permaculture garden in the summer. And yeah, and there's some, some of these places just, unless you have a connection, then you just have, there's no way to know that these places exist. So um, yeah, so I kind of felt, I felt that like, since music was always the kind of big attractor and the, that it would be amazing if there was a platform where wherever there was um, um, kind of environmental projects like reforestation, permaculture, regenerative farming, and wherever there was some kind of link musically, like whether it be a music studio or a festival, like there's a lot of nice festivals that, that, that are on farms, that take place on farms, but wherever there's a kind of symbiosis between the, between the two, between the, yeah, the kind of music and the, and the, and the environmental aspect, and just somehow kind of plot the, like, just kind of, kind of find out what's out there and plot them on a map and then just kind of make it very visible and very transparent for people who are traveling to connect. Um, but I thought that's kind of how the idea started and to like kind of make this very clear, like very, like a, this a little net, like a roadmap of different projects that exist. So I can just give you a little run through of the different projects. So we like, at the start, we decided to just to focus on what we know and not to kind of obviously to, to like, connections that we actually have and connections from different friends and to grow it slowly and not just kind of sprawl the internet for places that exist, but really just to make, like build connections slowly. So we have like this place where we are now. It's Eingen Clan, actually, this is actually currently it's in a uh, castle, but actually it will, it will be moved to, to Dijon eventually. Um, we have like friends in Norway who are doing honey, like biodynamic, biodynamic honey, and, and they also do art, artist residency with music where, where, I, where I just was actually in the last, I spent the last three months in Norway um, connecting there. And um, yeah, there are different places. There's like Love Foundation who, who um, they, they have a label and they raise money. And they have many different hubs around the world. And then um, fifty percent of the money that they go to it goes towards these um, environmental projects and social projects. And uh, you can see our project here in, in Brazil as well, which is kind of a good example of, of like this idea of what a project could be. Where yeah, where fifty percent of the donations go towards the music studio. So we have a music studio on one land, and on the other studio we, we concentrate on uh, sorry on the other land we concentrate on the reforestation. So whenever people, so we have a music label, and whenever people donate towards the label, fifty percent will go towards the the yeah, the label and the upkeep of the label and the artist, and the other fifty percent will go towards the the reforestation and the permaculture project, and also the kind of social aspect of it, the kind of creating a cultural center in the village with the locals, and uh, creating kind of awareness there. And uh, that, yeah, that, this was kind of like a kind of a really inspired, like when, when we created this this project, I realized there was no platform available in, online to actually really, where I could live and be exposed to the world. And people really, people really understand this. So I kind of, also this kind of whole platform was kind of a way to create another platform for this project. So they could connect with other like, like similar projects online. And um, yeah, and I so, and also like to have this like kind of symbiosis. Maybe I can go into this about section here quickly. I just did this recently to kind of, and just, just a little note that you can see here, it says beta, beta. So like we, we made it with Beat and myself and, and a few others of friends of um, Luana and Bruce and a, and a few others, Julius. We've just been building this ourselves, but like none of us are really like ex so much experience in building websites and like we're mostly musicians and audiovisual artists. And this is not really, but this is kind of a vision we had and we just taught, taught this to make a kind of first, um, like uh, try or template just to eventually to kind of progress it and and uh, evolve it into something a bit more professional and a bit more functional and fluid. But for the moment we have like, yeah, we kind of got it as far as we can get. Um, but yeah, just to give you an idea of the how it works. 
a little run through. So this is this is just like an example. It was using the 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 project in Brazil. So like all locations on the map are environmental projects that work with regenerative farming, permaculture, or reforestation. And then, um, yeah, each like each land like each land project on the map is in symbiosis with a music project that directly supports the initiative through their label releases or fundraising events. So there's a kind of like a symbiosis between the two. That wherever in the world there is really symbiosis between this kind of work and yeah, and music in general, that to kind of to give it a platform and to kind of amplify it and make it a, make it visible in the world. And so the kind of the idea kind of developed um, from the just being just being a map, but then to kind of it evolved to being a kind of a radio station. So like you can, oh, it's a little bit glitchy here. One second, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so you, so just say you're looking for a project initially, like you're looking for a project in the world, maybe nearby or that you want to connect with. So you find a project in your area, um, then the idea, like the, the function isn't there yet, but eventually I would like to click on this, on the icon, on the symbol. And then once you, when you, when you press on it, it will just play on the radio music from that project. So then like you, you, um, you can hear direct, straight away what music has been like coming out of this project and what's in connection with it. And, and so you can, you can get a really direct sense of what the project is just musically. And for, for me, I've always really believed strongly that um, the music is the, is the like the, the most direct form of communication. And that if you hear a song that you like, you just instantly connect with it and you don't even, you just trust it. You trust when you hear good music that it comes from a good place. So this is kind of the idea that you connect with the music to the, the project to the music. If you like it, then you can um, visit the website, discover the project and become a supporter of the project like coll by collaborating, by volunteering maybe, by, by, maybe go just visiting the place or otherwise just donating towards the music and like kind of supporting the, 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 mu the project as much as the music. And you, you know where your money goes to, you know, and um, yeah, you don't just like, this is another kind of important um, central point of, of, the, of the platform is to kind of cut out the middleman. And to, in, instead of like paying for a Spotify subscription and you don't really know where your money goes or paying for like downloading music or just, yeah, these different subscription, like the way the music industry works at the moment, there's no connection to the where the music comes from. You just see like an algorithm and it gets fed, you get fed music and you have no idea where it comes from. You know, have no idea where your money goes to. It is not, there's like, there's this big middleman who's the music industry machine, the Spotify's and the iTunes and the Amazons of this world. And they're like, and every time we just listen to music this way, we're just like supporting this, this machine, this capitalist machine that already exists kind of like, yeah, indirectly. And so the idea with this project is that when you, when you donate towards the, these um, projects, you know exactly where your money goes and you know exactly that you're, and you really want to, it's really like about creating like a kind of a, a collaboration and a kind of a supporting um, like patron um, relationship between the music, the music, the musician, the music, the studio, the listener, and the place that it was, it was created and the place that it wants to support and the place that it wants to nourish. And yeah, so it's like, yeah, so this was really like the, the backbone of the, the radios, the kind of um, the radio, like they, even if you don't know, even if you don't know what you want to, where you want to go, you just like, you can put on this like um, shuffle function on the, on this, the, on the radio, there's a shuffle here. I mean, the radio here isn't, it hasn't gotten to where we want it to be. This is a very primitive version of the radio, but it's something. But yeah, you just shuffle the radio and leave it in the background and and just play it like a radio. And then as soon as you hear a track that you like, you go, ah, where's this, where's this track from? And then you just check out the project that, that it's connected with. And then it's like a, a really nice way just to connect with like, with, uh, with something physically and, and, and the land and where it comes from and create like authentic connections and somehow, um, yeah, ground, make a kind of a grounded experience. So like the kind of catchphrase is like, yeah, like love the music, support the, the environment it wishes to nurture. And, um, this is for me is a kind of a real, another, another kind of, uh, central topic that, um, I feel that like the last 50 years or so, or since the beginning, since the internet, we've had this like migration towards the virtual sphere. 
like now we're we're meeting virtually and and um everything has become more virtual everything is like up, uh, become online streaming and physical like uh is obviously like things like um CDs and vinyl is a lot, lot less and everything is existing in this virtual sphere so we're exchanging virtually we're living virtually and we're creating virtually as well and somehow this is a very necessary and amazing step a step for for human development and and it's such a beautiful thing to explore but also in doing so we lost our connection with the ground and we lost our connection with with the earth and um so this is a way to kind of complete the, complete the cycle and i kind of call it tran trans virtual as we're kind of like tran um transcending the virtual and bringing back the like a kind of a fractal recursion bringing back the the earth and connecting connecting back with the earth again and to kind of just yeah, kind of grounding the the virtual musical community and because for the moment is everything exists online everything exists in bank camp uh, our money is virtual our, our economics is virtual it's, so when when you when you when we can like and it's such an amazing platform to be to live virtually but if we can actually use this to actually directly support the, the land then it can it completes the cycle and it can it becomes grounded and it becomes um yeah the, the energy the energy transferal is direct um uh can you, can you hear me okay just to, just to check yeah okay cool um yeah so the so it's just um yeah it's like completing the cycle having direct energy transferal i think up until, up until now we've had a lot of like energy miss misspent energy like just doing transfers online if you want to do a transfer to somebody else like paypal for example takes a cut and there's a cut from from wherever and it, and there's a lot of energy um being kind of misspent or kind of um, wasted and i think real like um when we talk of permaculture or sustainability or whatever or, or i think that that starts by this direct energy and not um just this scattered energy that gets dis dispersed on virtually and dispersed in different bank accounts and to different middlemen and so i really feel that it's like to, yeah to really nurture a kind of new model for for um a music community and not just a music industry is to really connect back with the land that it can, that's, that's that inspires it and to kind of complete this feedback and so i call this kind of regenerative music culture where we're kind of regenerating this music culture from the ground up and regrowing it again and um, we're obviously using a virtual platform to do this so it's kind of completing the cycle um yeah so um um i have a lot more to say but uh let me go down and see if i get it yeah so this is this is a lot these have some other like um th key points here um i'll just go through them slowly expanding the symbiotic link between musical expression in the local environment and uh um yeah so it's like it's establishing like these havens for music lovers and nomadic artists and like a, a new way to to um to travel yeah so this, this was the other point i like i was kind of touching on with, with the grounding of the music uh, community is that up until now we've like in the last 30 years of jet set travel like the ryanairs and the easy jets of this this way of like we, we created this model that the music industry was created by like or sustained by being able to take these like flights so we could like go to a pizza and people could spend the summer there and then fly back and then go to berlin and then get their culture get their culture um culture shot just by taking these like cheap flights and we've all built these like kind of like luxurious lives around these like cheap flights and even me with this with this um project in brazil like up until two years ago, it seemed very easy just to travel travel back and forth with a with a plane, and now it just doesn't seem so realistic anymore to really to really do like work to like um, to navigate in this way anymore. And and by by having all these flights, we kind of lost our connection with the land. And if we think back to like thousands of years ago, or hundreds of years ago, if we think back to like the the old sil the Silk Roads of of our time, where people would travel from from um, Europe and they would travel all the way to to Asia on the Silk Road and like bring back spices and different different um goods and but along the way they would exchange culture they would ex there would be different like um 
halfway houses, different stepping stones along the way where little hubs, like cultural hubs would, would grow and there'd be like little communities would grow just because it was on a trade route and like on a kind of an exchange route. And like over time with the, with like the advance of technology, of, um, of transport with, with, um, with flights, all these places, all these places just died because everyone was flying, just flying over them and no one was, was connecting with the land anymore. So, um, yeah, so, but now of course with Corona and flying not being so cool, um, ec ecologically as well with, um, with the carbon footprint, flying is kind of not really so attractive and not for many people it's not, it, people are seeing that it's just not really viable as a way of building a kind of social life, social cultural life around. So I really feel that the, the next years, like the post-corona years, post-pandemic years, will be really like culturally connecting back with the land, connecting back with the, the local the local environment, obviously, but also just like seeing what's around, seeing what's around and traveling more by, by overland, by railway or by car or um, however. So yeah, kind of like, so like kind of when I go back to, when I kind of just to go back to uh, the map, I kind of had this like idea that like maybe this semisphere could also be a kind of a, a platform for um, de creating these um, these exchange ways, these pathways or silk roads of, of the future. And the kind of, like for example, we're like we're in, a, in France now where I spent a lot of time and like we're here and uh, this this year I went up we, I went up to Norway to visit some friends here and then I come back like I came back down and visit some friends here and each each place having a place to stop off in a different community and exchanging some like some music and exchanging some some like techniques of um, yeah like like uh, um, permaculture techniques and and like there's a lot of people who who like gen naturally go from Germany and the, the north of Europe in the winter because it's so cold. They naturally do, do this like little route all the way down to Spain or to Portugal. There's a lot of people passing through here where we are in, in France because it's kind of like a halfway house between the two. So there's a lot of people passing through constantly up and down. And I thought it could be really nice to like create this like a little roadway map where you can see all these different like natural routes where you can connect with the different communities along the way. And like, and that would be attractive to like musicians as much as like people who are interested in in permaculture or regeneration, regenerative farming. And uh, yeah, so like kind of because uh, yeah, when we think about like cities at the moment, everyone, everyone, there was a big like um, like a kind of rush, like kind of a urban sprawl, uh, and after the industrial revolution and towards the cities because because there was work and there was excitement of culture and and um, yeah, and kind of pe people just like started clustering around the cities because of this. And obviously the older farms and the rural areas, all the young people left and got abandoned. And this is, all, this is a global thing. Every, everywhere around the world it's like this. And um, yeah, and like kind of, but now with Corona, like, people are really understanding that like the, like being in, in rural areas actually is, is actually quite nice especially in these times and that's, but, but the one thing that's always lacking is the culture. And it is like, yeah, there, there, yes, there are some like festivals that happen in the nature, but like, it's hard to find culture in the rural areas or unless you create it. And so this was kind of a way to kind of, um, but there are, but a lot of people are coming back to, to the, these projects. A lot of people are searching these, these um, different projects and eco villages and, and if people can like instantly connect with them, like by music and bring culture there, like kind of exchange, maybe people could go there and as a musician, just like do like a little, a little like kind of event or exchange some knowledge of music. And, but at the same time, work on the farm a little bit and not pay anything, like have like a kind of exchange but without, without any kind of like exchange of money and just go from one project to the next, exchanging music, exchanging seeds, exchanging knowledge of, of um, farming techniques. and to kind of create a new culture around this of exchange. And um, I think it's kind of happening already. It's just that for a lot of people, it's it's not really accessible unless you're like really into it, really connected with it. So this map was kind of an, also like a way to make, kind of make it very visible and make it very clear. And for people who are into, into music, just as much as people who are into the farming and just as much as people are into nature or 
or traveling, traveling in general, instead of paying for like Airbnb hostels in nature, what's the point when you have so many amazing communities around the world that put you up for free? If you have just something to exchange or some kind of, or willing to kind of work a little bit. And um, yeah, so this kind of brings back to the idea of like regrounding the, the kind of musical community to like bring re regenerative music culture and regenerative agriculture, like fusing it together. Um, yeah, and kind of what I call like like reactivating the r the rural sprawl. Like now we've had the the urban sprawl, and I think now it's like we can have a rural sprawl as well, and make kind of the. But yeah, that's the kind of, of there's more there, and I kind of uh, I've been talking a lot. Um, but I'm very curious to kind of hear what everyone else um, to connect with you guys and hear whatever what you, your your impressions are of it. From, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll stop sharing my screen now. No, 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 don't, 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 don't. Yeah, don't. Very powerful storytelling, Peter. <laughs> Amazing. I remember, uh, I think I was with you after that night too, when we met him, no? I was with Jakob. Yeah, we were all together in this night. So yeah. we were dancing in this club and I was... Um, I was really excited to meet you live because I just got to know you through SoundCloud and uh, and the CCC the year before, um, and I was excited that you were embarking on this project. Um, uh, I remember, like, was like two, 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 three years ago. You first had this idea. I remember. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's exciting because you know I can tell you a lot of stories. For instance, in the south of Italy where music and food and regeneration and staying together normally in, in, in rural environment, but not only in rural environment, are really the three essential elements for weaving very wide ecosystems of people. And so I would really love to see more South of Italy, well, Italy in general, uh, dots in that map soon. Yeah. I hope we can maybe make it happen, but I can tell you a story. So. In the in Puglia, in the in Apulia, in the um, there is one of the largest production of tomato in uh, in Italy. Uh, Italy is one of the largest importer of tomato and larger exporter of tomato. We just see a lot of tomato the whole year, um, which is a funny thing to I mean a kind of silly really thing to to to, to see because it's like can you just eat it when it's the right season? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it so um the problem with tomato production is that a lot of people from africa from migrant routes they get trapped into this uh, into in the side into south of italy working in extremely uh marginalized uh communities um at, at very cheap labor price so they get i think five euro per day to pick tomato in the middle of August, in the middle of July, uh, they had to try. They have to travel to get there to the actual field. It's all managed by mafia. It's all managed by by the the local uh, the local organized crime, and everybody knows it. You know there are reports on major journals, and everybody knows it. Europe knows it. everybody knows it. Yes. Those are the tomatoes you find in your pizza. Those are the tomatoes that you buy at the supermarket if you buy tomato uh, from Italy in, in a can. Of course, Italy, this is example, it, it's not the only one. This is the problem with, with agriculture and intensive agriculture is a problem that exists, I think, all over the world at the moment. But what was hap what is happening there still, sadly, is that every summer you have this basically this concentration camp of people uh, from all over Africa, mostly, uh, and from, from Central Africa, especially, um, that get amassed in this concentration camp. Um, and then during the day, they go to, to, to pick up tomatoes. And they're extremely disconnected with whatever else is around. Yeah. So along this... Uh, very sad story. Uh, a very happy story happened is that um, a couple of friends of mine, they decided one night to get their van 
and go with um, a Senegalian uh, musician friend of them, if, which maybe you know, it's Baba Sissoko. Okay. I don't know if it rings yeah. well. No, it's, a, it's really good music. Yeah. And they went in the middle of the night in one of this concentration camp and they started to do a, a party, like a rave with these people. <laughs> nice. So out of this night, um, uh, a very cool project started called Funky Tomato, uh, which probably uh-huh. is not, <laughs> it's not the, well, I think it's also a funny brand because Funky Tomato can mean so many things, uh, where the president <laughs> is actually one of these people. Um, you can pre-buy the tomato if you want to support this, uh, the production of the next year. Uh, but it's tomato that is grown and picked and, pr- and produced and distributed in a way that is not only fair for the people that actually uh, pick up these tomatoes, but that they're also, also the way it, it gets branded, the way it connected with the, with the end consumers, ultimately. And it's not that ex- more expensive than the one you buy in the in the shop. Of course, it's not super cheap, but it's like you know, it's a bit more expensive, and it's yeah. extremely good tomato, by the way. <laughs> so, I always love to see these kind of projects that connects music, food, and people because are really the three essential elements you can make anything out of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's a recipe for life. Yeah, like music is energy, food is energy. I don't know what else is energy, like, but like what we connect with as energy, it's like really the the fundament. And like just like you said, like if we have like direct energy exchange between this and create these like little these little um, connections be- between these like little cycles or little networks between them, that's where the magic happens, and that's where like it's fun and yeah, it's not just business, but it's life. And it's, that's I think that's kind of as well like you said with what stimulus fair is about. It's about creating like a foundation for like good living, like good living, enjoying and celebrating. And that's another, and another thing we was talking about yesterday about like, there's a lot of amazing permaculture projects and a lot of projects that, and a lot of them are very serious, you know, they're very seriously putting their older heart and soul into, into like making sure that, because it takes a lot of work to, to make it work. Cause it's so tough to do, do, to do it these days, like without like pesticides and, um, and doing things well because it, it's just because the whole society is not built around that so you have to really like go against the grain somehow and it's a lot of work and so so sometimes the, we arrive at these places and they're so busy and it's, it's so serious that there isn't there isn't much um time to to enjoy you know and time to celebrate and what's really like what's so important in life is to celebrate what you do to celebrate your hard work and to celebrate like to have these moments where you can really just let loose and let and let go and relax and to kind of celebrate together what you're doing. And it creates so much energy as well to celebrate. It. And in, in these places I've some I've visited, there's just there's no no room or there's no like everyone there everyone there are super into into the into the farming that there's no and everyone who's music who's cultural like not cultural but anyone who's um who are musicians they all went to the city to get work and there no one who's there's no artists living there and. No, not all. That's not always the case, but of course, not always the case. But it's just, yeah, like like you said, if there's this like a, uh, if there's like connection between the celebrating and the and what you're doing, it just becomes life and not just like working. Totally, and it's also uh, first before continuing, I want to welcome our friend Sarah Swali, which is uh, joining in this uh, amazing call with from from where are you? I'm in Jakarta. Jakarta, wow, that's so cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I did have a question, actually, but not if I'm interrupting. So whenever the moment yeah, comes, please do. If I can. Yeah? Um, so, yeah, I really love your project, and I'm so grateful for the space to talk about the challenges um, when it comes to Solar Punk 2077, because, like, it's true we're sort of seeing this revisioning of the world, like, with permaculture, with how music fits in... Um, uh, to a regenerative culture um, and to like this, um, yeah, like to how we kind of are replacing um, a lot uh, and like placemaking um, is so fundamental to what you're talking about too. Like how do we create place with with culture? And it's kind of interesting to me because when I think about the challenges of like that you're speaking to, which is, you know, like musicians traveling around the world and um, like, you know, like if 
uh, if someone was like, oh, Peter Power is playing, um, you know, here, like, I'm going to be like, cool, maybe I'll go there, you know, because um, like, what, because it sounds dope. Um, and I guess like, it makes me think about uh, hierarchy in a way and how maybe like, you know, we really like, like decentralizing um, music uh, in a way, because right now, like the reason I would do that is because like we, you know, certain musicians, we just think of them as the best. Um, and there's like this idea that, uh, you know, like we need to be where they are, um, because you can't find anything as good, uh, around you. And maybe it's in part because we're not really accustomed to being musical ourselves, yeah. um, and celebrating, like you're saying, like kind of like bringing that, bringing play and celebration as fundamental aspects of, of our local lives. Um, and so instead we go to it, right? And like, or we wait for it to come to us. Um, and I'm curious, it sounds like, you know, tactic, like it's, I'm curious about like tactics for that, you know, like the decentralization of, of like musical expertise or like, there's a social theory, you know, called social ecology where they talk about how like the shaman, for example, um, is the or, like the origin hierarchy. Um, and like when we create hierarchy, we begin to displace ourselves. Um, and uh, and I'm curious about like how that kind of fits in. I know this is maybe less of a question and more of like an open thought. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, it sounds like like those are the things that are being woven. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on it. I guess. Um, but yeah, like, like, it touched on a good point about like really dis decentralizing the, the 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 kind of music community and. Yeah, up until now, like the kind of the whole last two thousand years has been like this um, kind of creation of the individual and step, like and, and putting the individual on a pedestal. Like if um, if you're if you were like in classical music, for example, if you need to train for like ten years to be a musician before you actually can be heard, and then and then like and only the, music, the best musicians be put, get put on stage, and there's this kind of like uh, yeah, kind of, kind of continuous kind of like. Ref, like refining what it is, is as a musician and only the best can be heard and and in Europe this is so strong putting the musician on the pedestal but whereas if you go to Brazil like the first time I went to Brazil or or Uganda it was just such a breath of fresh air just to like like if, if if you go to Brazil and you just sit on any street walk like on any any kind of curb street curb with a guitar and just start playing within five minutes someone will come along and just start like drumming on their like clapping their hands or like singing or like like just people just feel so part of the music. There's no like, okay, you're a musician and you're and everyone just loves to hear it and lo and feels completely like uh, free to join. And, and I think this is uh, what I've always felt strongly as like as a DJ, like you mentioned this about about sham like shamanism. I started to feel really uncomfortable the last years about being a DJ, and um, I just didn't I didn't enjoy. Like I made a post about it a few years, and actually that was kind of also the kind of start of thinking about Symbiosphere was that I just don't enjoy being on a stage to people and playing and like having all this um, responsibility to kind of create a vibe, you know, like three, three or four people get in a, in a big party get, are like given a responsibility to, to like create the vibe, to like, uh, I mean, like just create it, but like, of course, there's feedbacking from the people as well. But if you think about how it was before, people, people would just like have a fire and dance around in a circle and there was no like, everyone did it together. and everyone felt empowered together and I felt really feel that like these it, these days it's just consumerism it's just you go to a party because you want to consume the music you and the whole like festival uh, concept is built around this that like the like the best the music that it's has the most people is the music that can sell the most alcohol and kind of sell the highest price tickets that's what succeeds and that's what like that's the benchmark for culture is like what can sell the most music, sell the most tickets, and and like, and also if you make a big sound system, you just blow people out of it, then you can get even more people, and then you can like have like so like the more compression, the more you can blast people out of it, the more you can create a, the more you can sell drinks, and and like this is the whole concept of music culture of festivals, and and um, there isn't much room for subtlety, there isn't much room for connection, uh, like subtle connection. And there isn't much room for ambient music, for example. If, like, Beat who's, who's doing um, Eigenklang, he does like do this like um, headphone concept where maybe you can talk a little bit better. Um, yes, it's also um, aiming to uh, make it possible for people to participate 
into the music. And um, so there's a binaural microphone in the center. I don't know if you had the chance to do it last year on the CCC. Um, and there's uh, many people. We, we play with 40 people with um, head, um, wireless headphones connected to this sound from this one uh, binaural microphones. And then we have some loop machines and some live setup where the sound that everyone hears goes through. So all the people can, if they feel an impulse or feel touched by, I don't know, a rhythm or something, they can participate into the sound. And yeah, it's more in a collective experience, kind of. Yeah, completely takes away the, like, the performer and. People like you have forty headphones, so everyone comes in with, into the space, and they don't really know what's going on. They can hear music, and it's and uh, the closer you get to the microphone, the louder it becomes. Like you, the louder the sound becomes from from from. Uh, but um, we, the, the listener doesn't know if if like what's going on, and, and slowly they realize that they're part of the, the sound, they're part of the music. And if they sing close to the microphone, it become everyone hears it. And like, so wow. many people who, who are musicians just who are so used to being consumers and listeners. I feel so empowered just to be able to like express themselves, and the people who are always singing are the people who've never sang before. Yeah, like those are the people who are really like are the people. Yeah, the people who are really going for it are the people that like never had this ex this chance before because they've always thought that they weren't musicians or whatever. And this is like, and it's it's such a uh, quiet thing because everyone's really listening, and it's just one microphone in the center of the of the space. And Beat was with Eigen Clan. Um, like this, where we are now, this community where we are now is kind of the hub for Eigen Clan at the moment. Yeah. And like we, they were touring in festivals around Europe, and it was always so hard to like compete with the big sound systems. Yeah. Because there's no <laughs> there's no space for ambient ambience in music in a musical context in, in terms of gatherings because you're always competing with this like boom boom boom. Yeah. And it's, like uh, no space for environmental or sounds around you. Yeah. Like um, birds. Or like or generative. Or right yeah that's yeah. interesting so we're like i really feel like the festival system is this people come and they get blasted out of it and they work hard they work nine to five they work hard and they just want to be blasted out of it party hard and, yeah they work hard <laughs> play hard and they just want to be blasted out of it and kind of just like drink drink a lot maybe and and just um kind of block out the environment that they're that mm -hmm. they're in because it's not a very kind of instead of celebrating the environment and for me celebrating the environment is like playing music quietly and, and having the bird song as part of the atmosphere and, and with this kind of iron plan setup it was the first time i really saw it in musical culture where wow this is like really a different paradigm like a new paradigm of how music can be and and like the, the like you can really hear birds in while you're while you're, while you're like singing or playing guitar or even playing beats it becomes part of the the music mm. i really feel like shifting this mm. this awareness because the more you do it the more like if you go out the weekend and you just get blasted out of it all weekend, you just carry this onto the midweek and this becomes part of your like media routine or mental stream. And people wear like noise cancellation headphones in the street because they don't want to hear the sound of car cars or and it's always blocking out, blocking out, blocking out the environment. Mm. And not nothing against noise cancellation headphones that they have their purpose, but like but, uh, but just I really feel that we've lost this ability to tune into nature and to tune into silence. Yeah, yeah. I see how but yeah. silence is very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Mm. It's funny, yeah. I was like yeah. talking to a, a shaman recently, and she was saying that in the tradition that she learned in in Brazil, that the community was the shaman and that she wasn't. And I think it's really interesting because I feel like you're taking it a step further and you're like, the ecology is the shaman, or at least that's where I'm like kind of hearing it's like the whole, yeah. the whole of the world is the shaman or like, because yeah. I think the musician is typically the one, like you're saying, setting the vibe. And I feel like that's the role of the shaman, actually, is like to basically hold the container. Um, and so it's like kind of interesting because if the community is the shaman or the ecology is the shaman, the container gets much bigger. Um, but it's super interesting to play with. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, I really like this. Like, a, like for me, this whole like new era, this new age of Aquarius, whatever that may be. Like for me, it's really about um, this thing of interbeing and not just like stepping out of the human, the human uh, community idea that like we're this like we're humans and and this nature and and moving towards this idea of like expanding the compass of 
of what a community is to like incorporating like all living beings, incorporating the animal kingdom, incorporating the plant plant life. And I really feel this new era is this new um, this new connection with with like relating to uh, to plants and fungus and virus and bacteria mm. and, and animals as a kind of just other other like equal beings and like equal rights for these beings and that uh, like uh, this is the right, this is where we really feel the way it's going and and give the- Corona rights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Let her live. <laughs> But like, but yeah. like, understanding what it is that that is that is because like, it's, I, just, I don't want to. It's also interesting that it's like. Oh, sorry, keep going. No, no, please, please. No, please. Oh no, nothing. It was a joke. Yeah, but like, uh, putting it's, it's in like, idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I put a hand up there. I want to share with you, um, this this idea that um, this awareness that um, the full vibe is created by really everything is is. Um, the source where the music is coming, the other people joining, the ecosystem where you are, the sounds coming from um, the sea or the wind on the tree or the birds. And the, the preciousness of, of, this, um, of this combination, of this melting of the everything uh, arriving to, to his hearing and, and often just reverberating with it and recreating this uh, amplifying this vibe um, when when before in the conversation it was mentioned um, how sometimes the border between who is playing and who is listening and in general who is just participating um, without the need of splitting who is playing and who is listening um, this this makes me think um, how the contest where um, often music is being played is is adding so much to the to the full experience of who is there and it came in my mind how um i visited some communities where some nourishing beautiful music was happening there um and it's happening also supported by what was around uh, the forest or um the specific situation where where it was happening and I was imagining the map that you showed us before and imagining um, during a journey or while passing in a new area where I don't know and start tasting and start sensing uh, the different sounds coming from that area and um, having the possibility to connect with that was, was very um, was tasty as an idea. And... Um, I was thinking how there is also the the music the the sounds coming from the ecosystem in itself, and um, this is something very precious as well. I imagine in uh, um, the sounds from the Amazon, the birds from the um, the whole orchestra um, of beings playing, and how that maybe can find a place on this map as well. Um, how. Uh, certain communities or um, eco-villages living in a very close contact um, with this natural orchestra playing all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, maybe a fear there. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what Ambient means. Places. Yeah. Well, there there is a very similar map that, to what you're describing. It's called audiomapper.org. I think he's putting onto this. Yeah. Um, which is kind of set, it's field recordings on a map from all around the world. And you can just like click, I can even show, show it you quickly. Maybe just a new tab, audio mapper. But uh, it's really, it's really, really beautiful site. Think.org, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, here we go. So this is, this is what you're describing um, more or less. Like you have like, all these are, all these are um, Creative Commons, free to download uh, soundscapes around the world. Um, so you go any, you go anywhere and you can just, I don't know if you can hear that, but you can download it and you can play it and, um, oh, there we go. Can you hear that? Yeah, we hear it. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is a, this is a really amazing website. I've been like for like. Is that real? Like, is that live? Is that recorded? No, it's not live. Someone someone's recorded with a recorder and and, and uploaded it. Live. Yeah. Oh. I didn't think it was live. Like, <laughs> they're too advanced. Yeah. 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 Maybe live. Wow. Um, but yeah, this is like, this is um, yeah, a really amazing site. And I think more of this kind of stuff where people can really connect with the environment um, is, ha is happening in this in this year of Corona where everyone's just staying at home. There's not so much traffic on the road, so you can get much better field recordings. People are connecting with their, what's yeah. around them. And uh, um, yeah, like somehow like having the quiet, like having this quietness and having people that just people realize this year that, that like that they finally had a chance to like have peace and like bring down the like this constant hyper stimulation of everything mm. of everything to like mm. tune into the subtler sounds like like bird sounds or mm. and tune into these subtler musical sounds. I see how often I would visit a community or a, a village, um, just starting from the sound that this um, where this place is is laying. That will be already um, something. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. Oh. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. You could hear, like, you could incorporate this audio map, but maybe, like, just like feed it into this map as well. Maybe you could work together and you could just hear, like, a. That'd be a nice idea, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a nice idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, the beauty of this map is there's, there's so many ways it can it can grow and so many different ways it can, like, um, yeah, kind of like uh, different different dimensions they can they can be communicated on for just not just for artists, yeah. for travelers, for for like musical collectors, yeah. Um, but, whatever. Yeah, but what tell you? I I really love the idea of seeing a map. Finally, I was so happy to see a map um, showing something already existing or something that potentially is being created through the connection that um, um, having something represented graphically yeah and because i i saw i'm seeing so many um lovely and beautiful projects and so many of them that are some are very small and i at the same time me or many other friends that i know they would connect with them if they would uh, be aware that they exist um so I'm, i welcome a lot um showing what for someone is invisible just making it on a map. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Making it like a, yeah. And making it easy to connect with with, with culture and, and at a sense, yeah, and, and traveling and, mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I would like to put it out there that like, we started this project a year, almost two years, a year and a half ago now. And like, it's like, as people, like, as we're, cause we're not really like um, web designers or web builders or page builders. I know this is a really nice platform for a lot of like different like whoever, whoever's listening out there or or anyone like I don't know but like really feel like this that we got it as far as we can take it but I just don't have the expertise to really like to really get like take it to take it to where it would be um like we like our team doesn't really have the expertise to take it to the next level like in terms of function and fun also. and yeah, yeah and fun so. and make it much more intuitive and and like create like a kind of like a like ideally it would be like a um, a login system where you can log in, you can post uh, events, post festivals, create your own projects, like post, like create your own dot on the map, and of course there will be some kind of um, curation, curation or, or or administration, but to, to be really like a kind of um, a horizontal thing where people really like a social network where people really create the, create it together. Mm -hmm. and, Do you have uh, developers? Sorry. Do you have developers? No, we've been doing it ourselves. That's the thing. Like we don't, we don't have funding. Like we have no funding. We've just been doing it out of love and out of doing. Yeah, we've been doing it out of feeling that it's a necessity and kind of also just to kind of connect, kind of, kind of archive all different places that we that we want to connect and kind of make it visible for our friends and um and anybody who's interested. But like, yeah, we're like at the moment we're at the crossroads where we need to kind of have funding to to be able to like or or find some way to kind of. Take it to the next level in terms of programming, and especially on the because on, especially for like an app as an app to work as an app, 
and um yeah to kind of make it really nice and intuitive and i mean people will most people use it on on mobiles these days and on the mobile it doesn't it works but it's like yeah it's, it's nice. not there and we're, we're really inspired by radio garden i don't know if you're familiar with radio garden like, are you in our telegram channel uh no i don't think so okay well maybe you can drop some links yeah um, i can do it so or maybe someone else will, but yeah. Radio, radio, as well. radio. Yeah, that I works. love Radio Garden. Radio Garden is—is is that the one where you can listen to radio all over the world? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. And there's also Radio, which is like a history of all the music from all the different decades. Mm -hmm. This Radio one, with the, just Radio with a lot of O's at the end. Four O's. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. Like they've just what, upgraded recently. The one that you they will listen sometime is this map that you can decide to listen to radio in Korea in the forties. Yeah, that's uh, Radio Dot Garden. But what's radio with four well, O's? Radio Garden is the live digital radio, and radio. Oh, not the same. oh no way! So you can broadcast. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean, Peter? Um. Uh, maybe I can show you quickly <laughs> since we're talking yeah. about it. Radio. Um, but yeah, it's just I'm talking about this this one in particular because it's just the, the app is so good now for the phone and just it's so much fun. And if you could like travel by like also by listening to music at the same time and connect with people in, in this kind of fun way, it just it's just like yeah, it's how the vision for the for the radio of Symbiosphera. Is that the radio eventually becomes like this really nice kind of player, but some, but a huge amount of music, and you can just like search the world and play different songs or just shuffle it and get this like really nice, intuitive, like enjoyable connection to what you're to what uh, to what you're listening to. And and I, <clears throat> this is kind of a point I wanted to bring up as well was that like about three years ago I stopped researching music i spent like i spent the first 15 years of my of like from, since the age of 14 i've just been devouring music like consuming and cons just like like uh anything i could find is downloading albums by albums maybe spending eight hours just devouring different music like diff music from around the world and music in general and, and just threw myself into it and i've always putting out mixes always playing and and about, and about three years ago i kind of uh Two years ago, I just started to lose the love of it somehow, of this this mode of researching music, and I just I wasn't being fulfilled by it. It didn't feel grounded. It didn't feel good anymore. I just, even though the music was like not that was there was no no more good music being made. I know there's so much good music out there, but the way that I was engaging with it was for me wasn't healthy, and I just decided I would just stop digging. I would stop digging music because it's. I don't like. I, I didn't connect with this. Just like consuming and downloading, and just having no real connection from what I'm downloading, and mm -hmm. and uh, I stopped. I, I basically just stopped researching new music, and it was really for me a really new thing after 15 years just devouring music and consuming it. And since then, I've been appreciating sites like Audio Mapper and Radio.org. This is not working because it's Safari because it's maybe it's Orca. Yeah. yeah. Um. But anyway, but like I've been. And since then, I've been appreciating radio because it's kind of, it's more real. It's like live. It's some, someone, a human behind it. It's not just an algorithm. It's uh, somehow kind of circumstantial, kind of spontaneous, like serendipitous to hear music in this way. And and I've been enjoying live music a lot more and not and not really so after recorded music so much, but like about lo real things that are connected. Like the music I love today is about my, what our friends are making what, and what our friends are doing and and hearing music live and hearing music connected to good projects. And I don't have, I've just completely like, like felt this, don't have the same drive to find new, crazy new music because even if, even if it's amazing new music, it's, for me, the, the moment, for me, the, uh, music isn't just what you hear, it's everything that, that's around it. Like the Funky Tomato, it's not just the, the, the music itself, but it's just everything around it. It's the whole thing that makes the music for me, man. For me, music is not just audio, like audio. It's music is life. And music is like connectedness. The, yeah, the intention. I guess the intention behind it and the, the connect. Like I said, the connection between between what's all what weaves it together and how how it's presented. And I always give this this analogy of like origami. The, the Japanese they just love presentation because for them, like they spend like 
more time with the presentation than they do by buying the gift because for them the presentation is as as important as as what as what the actual art is and what the actual gift is because it, it it's like and for me i see spotify and i don't want to like hammer on spotify but like it's the presentation is is um is an algorithm and a very like a generic thing where each track you see a bit of artwork but you don't really look at the artwork so much and the presentation is like very very dull and like uninfo- uncommunicative and um and mm. brain brain numbing somehow <laughs> i don't know mm-hmm. yeah, one, one comment i have for that sorry um this is the idea of i mean the one thing is the consuming music and then consuming music as a producer so one of the inspirations i get from you is even like uh, is there a way to give something back like this is what symbiosis is offering me as an invitation is there a way to to give back to something and yeah, uh, yeah around this idea another speaker in this space eric butler friend of virginius uh, making a project maybe you'd like to uh yeah just share the idea of um that you can give back to the source of where it's coming from mm-hmm. and um maybe it's more fun or it feels more healthy or it feels more grounded to um if you're producing music and you're just not only taking the tracks and the, from the water sounds from somewhere, but you find a way to let energy travel through this connection that you're establishing with. Yeah. The, I know. yeah, exactly this. Yeah. And there's a kind of feedback mirror between the the musician who's being inspired by the, by the nature and the nature. And like the more you give to the, in the, the nature, the more kind of you amplify it, the more like with this project in Brazil, like the, this, This, it's like a Bandcamp website, a Bandcamp um, label, and and uh, it's for don- it's for free or donation. It's not just like, okay, here's two euro for like two euro to like download or a fixed price, but like shifting into like a supporting economy where it's not just paying for a subscription or paying for a download, but it's a, you're making you're making the listener instead of bec- being become a instead of being like a consumer of the music, they become um, a supporter. Mm-hmm. and um it, it creates a shift in the, in, the, in the thought pattern of like okay I, i don't just like pay my money and get, get what i want to get but actually you stop and think okay how much is this how much value does this actually have um does this music have and how much how much value does this project have and it just creates a shift in the thinking of from consumer to supporter like you said and and um and i think this is really the key as well of shifting the consumer mindset to more interactive and collaborative um interaction and uh i think that like once once we like and in, in this in, in in this case like the more money that comes into the project the more more the more money can be the, the money is used to like amplify the the permaculture project or the reforestation project so the nature becomes even more beautiful and then the, the musicians get even more inspired so it's like this kind of like feedback loop of like um A nice feedback. Yeah, nice feedback. Look, with the birds, and more birds. Yeah, come more birds, <laughs> more ni- nicer bird sounds, more water. Like where we live is really in the balance of like, when it's a dry season, there's like no waterfalls. Yeah, and when there's actually, like, I can actually, pick up the- on the on the lines of um, let's say regenerative uh, feedbacks. Um, I mean, I see as I, I said before, I think really like music and food are really vectors and. Yeah. To um to carry a lot and um but not and like you've been exploring this idea of like uh the soundscape this map maps that you showed before where you can connect more with the environment and but I really like this idea that music is actually and especially music in this way like like Symbiosphera is 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 a uh, is suggesting is also a way to regenerate generations. And namely, people that goes, you've been like tracing a little bit your discontent on how you were consuming and producing music as a mostly urban grown person or like Western grown up person, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, but then you see that, for instance, music can be a vector in the way that when you go to rural places, often you find mostly you find, uh, very interesting uh let's say more traditional uh ways of making music 
in the sense of actual uh, sounds of actual rhythms, but also actual rituals that are around this music that is way different from the urban way of doing music and consuming yeah. music. And I think when people discover this, they are attracted to go and visit these places and also connect much deeper in that way because music doesn't lie. Music is not something that you can, uh, let's say, you cannot fake the, the vibe with the music. Right. You know? <laughs> like it or not like it, it resonates yeah. or it doesn't resonate, right? So I, on, on the other way back, people that live in that rural area and see you come there with this amazing techno gear, uh, loop station, uh, they're freaking amazed to like play with the shit, you know, like they, they really like can wait to have somebody to come there to play with this stuff as well. So I think it's a two way relationship. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, and it's, I've been seeing this happening a, a lot and I feel this is extremely interesting. So it's not connecting only with the environment, but also across generation and ac across epoch, uh, across eras, you know, in yeah. the industries of different places. Um, and yeah, of course, food, you can also then put food in between. There's, uh, uh, we were actually about to host, um, um, uh, Vanessa Lorenzo, uh, which is a Basque, um, bio artist to do a moss later the, in the place we live, it's called moss, which is not moss, the plant, but it's, it's, it's a different type of moss, but there is basically this possibility of playing plants or with plants yeah. so nice. with, with, with the um, sort of galvanic sensor now i'm not really an expert of those but maybe you are yeah, it's midi spread is this what my friends in, in norway are doing actually yeah they're actually, they're actually cool. working they're actually working with, with a thing called midi spread where they put sensors on the plants yeah they, they transfer it to midi and and they create like ambient music with yeah it's a really nice project it's organic structure he has some recordings here yeah but um it's exactly this you're saying yeah <laughs> awesome let's connect it more i hope this can also be a call for uh, people that want to engage in open source projects and meaningful projects especially developers um yeah it's yeah, really absolutely. yeah <laughs> and um when we're coming to like end this very most beautiful uh, session and um the next session is not in a program but um, it's just like a little conversation of making sense of all the conversations that we had. But before that, uh, I was thinking maybe we can uh, make some Eigenklang, you know, <laughs> <laughs> make some sounds together. Yeah. <laughs> including the ones that are listening, you know, make yeah. some sounds at home. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid of it. comes to Eigenklang. <laughs> Maybe I can do the voice, the new voice chat feature in the Telegram group and then pass the audio here if you give me one minute. <laughs> <laughs> nice to Got it. Mm. Peter, do, do you want to tell us how, how the vision started from Symbiosphera? Is there, um, I imagine um, it's a seed or. Um, Sometimes it's an immediate vision or, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it, I guess it was like a, kind of a combination of many different different seeds that kind of formed together. And, mm. and yeah, I don't know. It just kind of, um, like, like I, I started off with this, this, uh, this talk about mm -hmm. my, uh, my daughter and, and um, I've been not being able to like find a, a project that I resonated with musically to kind of spend in a, in a kind of um, in a community. So this is really one seed, but the other, yeah, the other one was, um, uh, yeah, really a platform for, for the project I had in Brazil, mm. the symbiotic, the symbiotic project, the symbiotic symbiosis between the music studio and the land studio, and yeah. really having this revelation that like, of course, if music is in symbiosis with nature, then beautiful things can happen. And this was really like, yeah, I really wanted to create a platform for this exist and mm. I just couldn't find anything that was existing so it was really like a yeah yeah really like connecting with this symbi like symbiosphere which is which which means like the atmosphere of symbiosis mm. and I've always like it, musically I've just been like I started off um I started off making like techno music and very fast music and like as the years gone on I'm just becoming more and more ambient 
and more and more tuning into subtler sounds and tuning into silence. Mm. And uh, and yeah, so it just, it's just been a natural progression to kind of to tune into like when you, once I started to kind of really tune, uh, bring my my like hyper stimulated like a uh, mind, which I started, which I uh, kind of like was trust into the music sphere with so much stimulus from like, computers, from TV, from mm. from advertisements, from com- like music and culture that that I couldn't quite I couldn't quite my mind to like really make ambient music. So all my whole life I wanted to be an ambient producer, but I was never able to bring my uh, my my awareness down mm. quite enough to be able to like really relax into the into ambience. Mm. It's only in this time in this year now that where like there isn't much there's no festivals happening there's there's no uh culture so much uh culture happening that like a lot of musicians are becoming ambient producers because because it's like <laughs> because they're able to yeah, yeah. They're, they're not thinking about the dance floor anymore they're, they're just like it makes sense just to play to, to your surroundings and it's really i think it's really bless, real blessing that this is happening because i really feel the more ambient not exactly it doesn't have to be ambient but like it can be like ambient like touch to to rock music, ambient touch to electronic music, mm-hmm. but if everything just has like a, a slight more touch to, of ambience, then the, the the levels go down, the compression goes down, and the dynamics become increased, and the awareness becomes increased. I and music, how... music has this amazing feedback of, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm seeing so much how um, the different shades, the different expressions of. Um, the ambience and the beats and the vibe are um, creating and shaping so much the vibe. I I see how sometimes in, um, in a gathering of people or um, when there is a vibe which is still enough or which is allowing um, what is asking to sprout out, to sprout out and come. Um, um, it's it's something very fascinating and 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 touching um, to see this thinness and um, the vibe that gets richer and richer and richer and um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah it's it's a very um, yeah it has been a very intense revelation for me how um, we are playing in. Um, this field of um, very subtle form of uh, interactions. And uh, when there is a fertile soil, which can be created by um, also music, also vibration, also a container that allow um, those connections, those dances to happen. Um, Yeah. And yeah, big thank you to um to vibration to ambience music to what is coming um to you for sharing um the story of symbiosphera and your yeah your openness to share the full story and the call um for contributors for for developers for uh, more communities that want to to be there on the map to uh, share their um their sounds their voices their music uh, their healing spaces here we have any more <laughs> 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 being. Uh, Meanwhile, yeah. Yeah, and thank you so much for mm. yeah creating this space as well. It's really really nice to connect as well. And mm. yeah. So the Telegram group is feeding into the stream, so we're not gonna hear it here on Zoom. Um, but I think it's streaming directly inside the streaming, I guess. <laughs> So we're going to we're going to do an eigen clan now. I'm not share, liable right? or responsible if people will stream <laughs> Gemma, not approved Gemma tracks <laughs> or whatever else. <laughs> but yeah, maybe we can do what's the name in German? What is this practice of making noise together? Eigen clan. Eigen clan. So what do we have here? We have two cups. <laughs> Christmas theme Einklang. Oh, 
This is the beauty of volume science. Well, when, we, when, we, when we ever do these things, you start to like really explore the environment and see what yeah. you see. Like, what do we got? Like, what makes sound? It sounds all around. Yeah, and you just start explore and like turn on the Hoover. Uh, <laughs> you know, just like just see what's there. See what makes noise. Interact with sound. Like, see what like if your nature just like yeah, what 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 rustles. What like like what's already there. Bring a microphone to if there's a beehive. Bring a microphone to a beehive. Mm -hmm. You know, and just explore what's around you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this, this is like a nice kind of little, in, like a little mini insight into what I can, can be. And music is a format for which yeah. to explore. Mm. <laughs> um. So when so, are you back in Berlin? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you guys are in, um, you have a little studio right above moose right yeah it's more like our house but that's a studio i like the studio yeah. mode <laughs> it's becoming more and more studio are you, there now? are you there now it's a big yeah yeah uh, right. Welcome. Uh, it looks like you're in a it's more than a big game <laughs> and the, the art the artwork behind you this is uh rome no this one Oh, it's a backdrop. It's not actually. Yeah, this is an actual. Yeah. Ah, okay. It's the backdrop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah. Next time in Berlin. Yeah, good question. Maybe next time we go north. These days, I don't. I don't. We, we just kind of. I, I, currently, I'm going south because it's. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the next time we go north, which is probably in, in the one more days, that will probably pass by Berlin and. It'd be amazing to connect then, then in person and yeah, do a little talk again. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to set up the Eigenklang setup for our New Year's Eve, you know, or whatever with Megan. Yeah, yeah. ah, yeah, so, you nice. can uh, just get a field recorder and a headphone splitter and maybe a looper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't need so much, it's not so high tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Real fun. I think so. You're kind of traveling, a, you're kind of planning a caravan, kind of Iron Clan caravan. Yeah, bring the Tamura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Party. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the very, very last session of our four day streams, Placemaking the Solar Punk, with us live in the studio. Welcome, Henny. <laughs> live from London, Phoebe. Hi. Right next to me, Atman. Live from Jakarta, Saraswati. Yeah. 
in yellow today, Chris. <laughs> Looks like orange. And uh, oh, my left, Jakob. Yeah. 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 And the yeah. very master of disaster, Uja Samova. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Eugene. Yeah. Solo Eugene. Organize the whole thing. Um, you're welcome to stay live uh, with us for the for the closing session. You put the vibes in in us. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, the the ideas that we ha had four days of conversations, and we just wanna um, like share reflections or share moments that. Um, that touched us. And I will start with the first story. And uh, in the morning of today, I was watching Solar Punk Girls um, session. And I was just sitting here being live on stream. And then I was in a bit of a, like, uh, Solar Punk Girls started with the meditation. So I was sitting in my meditation pose. And then Uji came by and he brought a, a paper that said, uh, <laughs> look on the candle till you start to cry. <laughs> and he put a Shut candle up. here and made me stare at the candle. So I was like, this was my, <laughs> my morning meditation. It was a very focused uh, moment. I was wondering. It was so funny. I didn't see you there until at the end. I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> We should have made a reference to you as like uh, some kind of being from the future it's like wordless knowledge wisdom. Yeah, this the sessions are so for me just so interwoven right i mean like there was my uh, michelle bounds talking about we need to mutualize all the infrastructure and then it's mm -hmm. like uh, peter power is presenting um like a, a whole map where you like building a new culture and you see like all the different projects that can like be part of that or like even the the whole solar punk governance ways of making governance decisions with the with the birds like can be part of some you know a new culture uh, map like like that mm -hmm. like that and um yeah the other highlight uh for me was the the hologram session um it felt so powerful um how was it for you yeah actually i was oh. thanks um I think I was so blown away by by the hologram project that I was having trouble to make words about it. Like it's so meaningful mm. and so so wonderful. Um, but mm. yeah, I mean, I mean, used to being like having uh, I don't know, like maybe there's a nice project, but it's missing something, and it seems to be like pretty complete. So I was a bit floored by. How wonderful it was! <laughs> a bit shocking to just feel, wow, this is great, and then and um, I'm hoping to see all of us there together, supporting each other in a hologram of some sort. Um, what about for you? Yeah, I found Cassie to be so generous with her time. She was just she just wanted to support. She just wanted to spread it, not as a leader, but as the steward. And like, that's so much like what her practice is, right? Yeah. She's like, if anybody wants to do it, I'll help facilitate it. Like she has a million things to be doing. She's mm -hmm. written a book, but she's here offering like mm -hmm. facilitation to anybody who turns up on the internet, basically a bunch of randomers who uh, enjoy her work. So I just think that like, she really walks the walk in this practice. And you can tell by like the diligence in her research, like how she brings it. So the fact that like, this was brought in to this very solar punk placemaking narrative. I think it fits really well. And I'm just really happy to have had a chance to be a part of it. I didn't really know, I didn't really know much about it until Jakob Herney and Yuji were like, you're going to interview Cassie. I was like, oh, great. Okay. I would love <laughs> to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I... Well, sorry to interrupt there. Um, um, but we actually have, we kind of delayed our community meeting do this to do this talk <laughs> your, your bacterial what, what was that uh phoebe this morning the bacterial bacterial council is starting <laughs> <laughs> that's how i do my exit but, uh, thanks yeah, for we, your time peter yeah thank you so much and yeah so we have to, to duck out but yeah we have 
Mm. Yeah, I'm just jumping into this meeting, uh, another meeting now. <laughs> but, Tell uh, them we say hello. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we love meetings. But has, has this all been recorded? Or um, yes. be, I'm really curious to get their talks. Like I just caught the end of the, the hologram one, and I was really curious. Um, actually, they're gonna they are being uploaded automatically in a sort of crappy way, and then and um, and then in a few days we will have the proper one online. Like okay. nicely polished and shit. Okay. Nice. If you want to share it, and if you want to watch it, you can watch the crappy one. If you want to share it, I would suggest you wait a couple of days. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. Well, thank you so much. You said, Peter. I took it. Had this continues. All right. Thank you. Ciao. 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 Well, ciao. Ciao. <laughs> ciao. Yeah. I. One thing that touched me was to see the, the, the dedication, the, the commitment for, for making it happen from um, yeah. everyone involved in it. Um, in first navigating all the uh, organizational thing and configuring the broadcasting and uh, thank to Eugene who put so much love and care in this. Um, and yeah, seeing how, how such um, a nourishing um, space and virtual space. It was the first time for uh, for everyone organizing it like this. Um, run just by love, by people who who want to uh, that feel that is the thing they want to do too. And pancakes. Uh, and pancakes <laughs> by love and pancakes. Yeah, uh, the true guiding energies. Um, <laughs> Where's yeah. Luigi? Hmm? Bring him in, bring Yuji into this yeah. into the screen. Come, come, come. I, feel, yeah. I feel what isn't evident in the main feed. Yeah, let's is smoke the guy. <laughs> is the amount of care behind the scenes? Yeah. Like when I joined the room mm. and finished mm. the live thing, Yuji was there yeah. to like introduce us, yeah. check everybody, make everybody mm. feel comfortable, count you down, mm. okay, you're live. Like, yeah, it was nice. Really well. And yeah. that's like reflected in what people bring to the to the main feed. But it was all that little yeah. subtle work behind. I want to thank Levi Genou from Creature Work. He gave us this opportunity to do the stage this year. And he's been under so much fucking work for this Congress. Like coordinating the graphics, the website, the like so many things. And the Congress is really made by this, you know, people that they just say yes to this crazy <laughs> opportunity, not really knowing what it entails. Um, but I would say after all, it was fun. And it was so nice to see you all be part and, and contributing. Uh, and supporting, uh, and also people that didn't like participate maybe in the program, but they were there. I want to thank Basim also, Azindi, for helping me the first day to set up OBS and uh, to kind of inject some salon vibe in the you know, it's like I I'm just learning from great hosts like Chris, like um, Phoebe, also, and uh. Uh, yeah, I think like people that can really hold a space for for guests to to be there or for a content to be channeled, uh, that's that's really good stuff. And just come sit down. Yes. So yeah, thank you very much. I I really couldn't hold space for guests. Uh, come, come at in. all but after like three four sessions you know you're having fun like mm -hmm. right now yeah it happens <laughs> come, come. Yeah, I'm, I'm the, I'm the speakers. <laughs> hey next time we bring yes. more, more. Oh my gosh it's a whole squad <laughs> so now we talk about squad only uh, this is your room, by the way. <laughs> getting some drinks for you. It's, oh, it's a portal, your room. <laughs> See how much beauty is creating. What is ownership, anyway? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can say, like, closing remarks that Phoebe and I were talking earlier after um, the meditation, and we were both just like, reflecting like i i could feel like the heartfulness of this um from all the way in jakarta and it's crazy after like such a rough year 
to have so many people come in and just like heart explode everywhere and speak to like what like the world they really want um in like the whole shape of it which is coming from the future um and like dreaming from that future is just so resonant and really aligning you know after like this rough like weird choppy um time like around the world it's so cool to have people land at the end of the year there you know mm. so nicely done mm. really nicely done yeah i was so grateful i called saraswati and i was like oh my gosh i just like i need to be reminded all the time of doing things i love and yeah thanks for creating this i would not have done anything remotely like creative in the in these like <laughs> three days if it wasn't for you so massive thank you great way to end the year yeah thank you awesome thank thank you. You. yeah yeah all right yeah there's something that feels like a beginning as well and mm. i mean it's also interesting to go into this like something that seems very private but is very public you know mm. and then um I mean, how do you deal with the kind of limitations of having you guys very, very far away, but also, you know, like tapping in there? So like a bit of the, the energy of the beginning was there, like, hey, there's like, this was just like such a little chunk of friends that we were bringing in, but already mm -hmm. like the energy that this was generating and the projects that are around us and that we want to support <laughs> are so huge. And um yeah. So how do we uh, continue cool. with the nice. with the with the energy built mm -hmm. in here? And um, yeah, one of the questions that just <laughs> came up to my mind. Uh, so Phoebe, you said you were doing a lot of like reflection, and of mm. Penny, you were doing some re reflection mm -hmm. practices too. Yeah. So anybody feel like you know now that we are like having drinks here, sharing some announcements with us what's the question <laughs> <laughs> Reflect. this is Reflection. a this is jacob kind of question <laughs> it's like in the, in what the chat, in the chat uh, you and you had posted a series of, of questions for reflection at in the end of the year to look back and to to look forward basically and I did yeah. a, a writing session um yeah and I think it's it's really nice to take a moment to break through the year and see what 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 comes up in the hands like that's valuable um that you want to bring into the new year with you and maybe some stuff you can just put away for a while Yeah. Break through is a nice. It's a very good yeah. metaphor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rest through life. Break through the sound garden of your year. Gently. Break through the sound garden of your year. Yeah. From break down to break through. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the reason I was asking, you know, we had this idea of making a, a session about squats. And yeah. And we're kind of like the meta squat session, like just showing what is a squad and how a squad feels and how a squad talks, right? So, I mean, if you have any other ideas of like explaining the squad, um, I mean. Yeah, or if you know any way we can pay for burritos with vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vibe tokens. Yeah, the, the, the vibe got a lot of energy as well, right? Like Peter Power's idea of like, I don't want to consume vibes. I want to create mm. uh, yeah. vibes, mm. but I want to co-create vibes, but, you know. <laughs> this is, yeah, this was the hologram teachings too, right? It's not the taking, it's actually a giving. It's actually, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's giving and letting circulate. It's staying mm. and then passing and, and going and maybe coming back through another person. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Another form. I like that Sarah video sometimes like disappear for like five seconds and then leave a flower. <laughs> like, what's going on there? So she's, yeah. that's when she's checking. Uh, she's she's checking like, Facebook. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> she's lost, lost attention. There she goes. Yeah. Let's. Um, I mean, it's 
nice to think about um like this taking a shape i don't know if this is a reflection it's maybe a reflection but it's nice to think about um the shape this will this can take you know like um now that we've realize that there's all of this incredible energy that Yuji has been the shepherd and summoner of. It's really cool to like begin to think about um, how it might grow and what it could become and how we can also like contribute to all of these incredible projects and be really integrative, you know, with so much creativity and like, yeah. So that's nice to reflect on. Mm. Yeah, it feels so fertile. Everything feels much closer from inviting all of this amazing creative energy in mm. and seeing the power of curating and, yeah. like you said, Otto, kind of like unblocking the energy flows between the ecosystem of mm. people, projects, land. Mm. Um, and I think that's definitely what we need more of. Like, we all need to contribute to the collective healing of the world in some form. And that doesn't mean we all need to be shamans, <laughs> but um, there's plenty of different ways in order to, to help circulate that energy. And like, I've really experienced that uh, it mean? these days. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe ecology. Yeah. Regenerative sis admin. <laughs> <laughs> that's your new title. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a form of transcending. So <laughs> I love it. I absolutely, Chris. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel we need more of coming together and um, asking when we need support for a project or uh, just asking. Mm -hmm. And when you ask, mm -hmm. it's to reverberate into the network. And yeah, yeah. just coming closer and allow um this part of us that want to flourish and connect to just find our way out like a seed one sometimes you know i love how when you plant a seed and it's under the earth so the earth is pretty compact in the seed and in that situation you find the power to mm -hmm. the strength to uh go through the earth and reach the sun mm. so sometimes when there is also not the perfect situation for, for allowing something to flourish, but maybe that's creating pressure that can be transformed into something, um, something nourishing, even if it's pressure. And yeah. Hmm. Mm. Usually yeah, call... nourishing pressure. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> have I been pressing, pressing you? No, so no. Have you, not, have you not been under pressure? I've been, I've been. But I also <laughs> felt that I was like, pushing you to do something you didn't want to or you didn't No, have. because that you gave people such, like it was with such care. I think you asked mm -hmm. me like five times, you're like, are you going to give a talk? I was like, I'll try. You're like, are you going to give a talk? I was like, no, it turns out <laughs> I don't, it turns out I don't have the time. You're like, what about if I just play one of your videos and ask for Q and A's? I was like, I don't know. You're like, you're like what about moderating? I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> I actually pushed you. Into um, a good thing. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, me too, you, G. I I felt I didn't feel pushed. I felt um, like persistently invited, which is a very different thing. <laughs> I woke up this morning literally not knowing what I was gonna we were gonna do, and I had not talked at all to my two other <laughs> speakers, and it was great. And I think it's because of the magic field you created. Absolutely, persistently welcomed. I hope it's persistently consensual as well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't no, feel. Yeah. No. I just said no. <laughs> but then I showed up anyway. Yay. Yay. <laughs> but come on, you, you spent one night, like almost an entire night with Chris and I to try to set up this fucking 2D world and then <laughs> and then saying, okay, just whatever. <laughs> that was a good, it's a good concept for next time. No, you, yeah, yeah, you guys don't know the solar punk theme we have in store for next time. Yeah. <laughs> We have an entire map that is not there. People didn't play with it, but it's in our mind. <laughs> solar camp. Solar camp. Oh my God, solar camp 2021. That's exciting. Was that the world that we explored, UG? Yeah. That's but it. Like, yeah, but we couldn't, no, the one we explored was the Bitwasher Bacteria Lab. The okay. Bacteria Network. Yeah, thanks to Mark for actually yeah. spending this time yeah. showing us through that. Yeah, thanks to Mark and Acteria and Bitvashirai and our sister Gemini channel. And Mark this morning made me notice that, not to be too, too proud, but like he was showing a screenshot of the of the agenda and would say, actually out of 16 assembly channel, we are just really 
very few that are making so much content all the time. And so I didn't notice that if you didn't point it, point it to it. This, wow, I was like, wow, really? So I invite the other assembly to do more content <laughs> or I don't know, just make it more open and more, I don't know, international, let's say. This year was a great opportunity to make it, to connect with other spaces, you know, from Japan to Taiwan to Mexico. Uh, we try to do that as well. And Akiteria, Bitwashira, I also try to do that. I wish maybe in the next Congress that could be much more diversity also in the identity and the representation of the of the actual assemblies, the channel, um, like more increasingly, let's say. So every year more. This year was good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Is it, is it deep fake? This, well, it's it's deep fake. this is not a cigar. <laughs> Just perspective. So, so maybe we can celebrate the fact that we could smoke him by smoking a cigar. That makes sense. <laughs> well, with this nonsense. Any interaction with our chat? What's the chat saying? I don't know. Close it now. I, I think they went to sleep, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there is Dominic. Hello, Dominic. Hello, Alias, and Jens, and Emme, and Andor, and Swat, and everybody that participated in the chat with nice, inspiring conversation. Martin, Valentin, Abrarakur, Chicks, and everybody else. Goodbye. Yeah. See you next year. Ciao. Oh. <laughs> Hello. No. Thank you.